The location is Varadero on the northern coast of Cuba. The sign in Spanish reads, Seventh World Championship of Underwater Hunting. Teams from 31 nations are accommodated in this American-style luxury pleasure resort. Representing Australia is 1965 world champion Ron Taylor, manager Andrus Lidhams, 1967 Australian champions John Black and Vic Lay. The team is quick to commence training and to acclimatise. Conditions are near perfect for skin diving. The water is warm and clear, with marine life plentiful. Coral is abundant, but formations are different to those the Australians have experienced in their Great Barrier Reef. A feature of the Caribbean is the sea fan. John Black collects a Triton shell. Vic Lay goes down holding his breath, for underwater breathing apparatus is not allowed in spearfishing competitions. One of the secrets of underwater hunting is to exhibit a slow, leisurely technique, so as to conserve energy, with no hurried movements that would scare fish. John Black has won two Open Australian Spearfishing Championships, and can hold his breath around two minutes, as can most other top-notch spear fishermen. In a deep crevice, John finds a sleeping nurse shark. A gentle prod with a spear awakens the creature. They are not considered dangerous if left alone. Same applies to the stingray, although for protection, they have a nasty barb on their tail. A keen eye will detect signs of a crayfish, a tropical variety similar to ones found in Australian waters. This is Giuliana Trelliani from Italy, a keen spearfisher girl. Unfortunately, women are not allowed to compete in the World Championships. Giuliana will later make an attempt on the women's deep diving record. In shallow water, a most unusual looking fish that doesn't seem to mind the ocean surge. Vic Lay plays a game with the sluggish fellow. Back on the beach at Baradero, the Italian team in action. The shark is similar to the one we saw earlier. The giant cod is just like the Queensland groper found in Australian waters. This one is around 300 pounds. John displays his prize, a tarpon, a more meritorious catch than the cod, for tarpon are very elusive and not easy to spear. The Cuban capital, Havana. We are looking from the top of what used to be the Havana Hilton. The seaside hotel where all teams are now staying. The influence of Cuban leader Fidel Castro is everywhere. At night, the grand parade of teams in the giant cultural centre of Havana. This is the official opening of the 7th World Spearfishing Championships. With just over 30 nations participating, this is by far the best attendance in the history of world spearfishing. Only 11 nations contested the previous competitions. An impressive ceremony before a capacity house. Next day, all teams fly to Cayo Lago off the southern coast of Cuba, where a new 63-foot fishing boat is allocated to each team. Iron cannons from some old wreck. The Australian spearmen are anxious to complete the six-hour boat trip to Cayo Avalos, where the championships will be held. Ron Taylor, John Black and Vic Lay, under the watchful eye of manager Andrus Lidhams, First indication of Cayo Avalos is the giant floating hotel for tourists.
On the coral island, a tent is provided for each team. However, because of the humid atmosphere, most divers prefer to sleep on their boat. Helicopters are on duty at all times. It's obvious the Cubans have gone to a great deal of trouble and expense to stage these championships. K.O. Avalos was completely deserted and natural before the Cubans got to work on the championships. Ron Taylor has the dual task of competing in the championships as well as making this film. Competitors are allowed one day to look over the competition area, but without spear guns. The water is so warm, neoprene suits are not required. It's a real pleasure to skin dive under such ideal conditions. The Australians are searching to find where fish are congregated. It's also important to learn fish habits. Each species has different characteristics. Some are inquisitive, others timid. Most live under rocky ledges or in caves, while others keep to open water. Elk horn coral, looking like the ribs of a long broken up wreck. Magnificent gardens of sea fans responding faithfully to every whim of the ocean. John Black pretending to hunt. A Nassau groper, a particularly inquisitive fish. The trustful hogfish is quiet and easy to spear. Plenty of shells, but no time for collecting. Over the reef edge, the boys find an anchor. There could be a wreck nearby, and it's known that fish prefer to congregate near wreckage. In shallow water, the graveyard of a large diesel engine, and it looks like the ship has long since been smashed to pieces. Vic has found a good school of fish, some big parrots amongst them. They'll be fine point scorers. Barracuda are often on the scene, so is the occasional shark, but luckily there's no physical contact with divers. Small fish are in great numbers, but they'll not be eligible for weigh-in, for the minimum weight has been set at one kilogram, and that is 2.2 pounds. We see Juliana Treliani again. It was here at K.O. Avalos, during the championships, that Juliana took a deep breath and a heavy weight to plunge down 130 feet to a new world record for women. Next day, the Armada journeyed out to the reef edge for the first six-hour hunting period. John Black making a final check on his gear. Same with Vic Lay. Andrus Lidhams briefs the dinghy rowers and commissioners. Radio contact is kept with base in case of an accident. An early morning rain squall delays the start for about half an hour. Vic lay deep breathing to condition his respiratory muscles. It also helps to subdue the mounting tension of the big event. Ron Taylor replaces his camera with his spearing gear. With all boats in the area, the competition starts.
This film was taken by Ron Taylor during training. No underwater photographers are allowed near competitors during the hunt. Vic spears a barracuda. In actual fact, these fish were banned from the competition. Reason for the ban on barracuda is the possibility of retaliation by needle-sharp teeth. John has sighted a groper in a crevice. Vic Lay with another. Scores for the championships are calculated at the rate of one point per gram. That is, 1,000 points per kilogram. Each fish receives an extra 1,000 points. Minimum weight is one kilogram, while maximum scoring weight is 30 kilograms. The underwater hunt lasts for six hours on two consecutive days, with no limit on number or species of fish. All spear guns must be loaded by the competitor's own muscular strength. Explosive tip spears are not allowed. Sharks and rays are not eligible, and the same applies to a couple of species of poisonous fish. See the spear point top right of picture. Vic Lay is behind it and the big cod an unhappy recipient. What a shame this wasn't in the competition. Back at K.O. Avalos, the moment of reckoning. Fish by the cutloads. An efficient weighing system with a set of scales for each three countries. The Australian team is not happy. It's obvious other nations have collected more fish. With a spearfishing competition, it's difficult to predict a winner. With all that fish and with competitors milling around, the results are not obvious. Although the indication is that the Cubans, French and Spanish have speared well. Spanish spearman Jose Nogura, proud of his catch. South Africans in their first world championships. The Japanese came to Cuba predicting they would win, but they're not certain now. This is the end of the second day's hunting, and it's known the Cubans will be hard to beat.